Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dabal Mehta and today we'll understand how to run confirmatory factor analysis in Jamovi. Confirmatory factor analysis that is CFA is a statistical technique used to test whether the data fits a specified model or structure given in the proposed theory. It is used to confirm if the relationships between a set of observed variables like survey questions also known as a measured variable and their underlying factors like attitudes or traits also known as a latent variable match what we expect based on a theory or previous research. Remember these survey questions are on Likert scale. In confirmatory factor analysis variables are divided into two main types that is latent variable and observed variable. Let's see this on the right hand side. Loyalty is a construct that is the latent variable it is captured or it is measured with the help of four statements S1, S2, S3, S4. These are the measured variables. Latent variables are constructs that are not directly measurable or observable but are inferred from the multiple observed variables. You cannot measure loyalty directly so for this you require some statements. Observed variables on the other hand are directly measured or observed. So S1, S2, S3 and S4 are observed variables. Loyalty is a latent variable also known as a construct. Let's try to understand this with an example. The football team does not have its existence without the players. So Joe, Sue, Mark and Dennis represents the football team. The performance of the football team depends on the performance of the individual players. Similarly, in case of uh, confirmatory factor analysis, we will ask some statements to our respondents which are on Likert scale. So the loyalty is measured with the help of four statements S1, S2, S3, S4. These are measured on the Likert scale which we use in the questionnaire. Now let's see how we can run this in Jamovi. So we are having a data. Value for the insurance is represented by three statements. These are on 10 point Likert scale. Value 1, value 2, value 3. Loyalty for insurance is uh, measured with the help of seven statements. Okay. Loyalty 6 is missing, that's the reason it is 7, loyalty 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, loyalty 7 and loyalty 8. Trust of agents for the particular company is measured with the help of 4 statements, TA1, TA2, TA3 and TA4. Trust in the insurance company is measured with the help of 4 statements, TC1, TC2, TC3 and TC4. Let's run the confirmatory factor analysis. So for this we will go in factor and we will run confirmatory factor analysis. Now I will transfer value 1, 2, 3 this side and I will give the name value. Make sure that when you give the name don't have the spacing in the name. So value for the insurance. Now add the new factor and that is loyalty. So select from loyalty 1 to loyalty 8 and drop it here. Now I'll give the name loyalty. Again add the new factor. You'll have to click here. Trust of the agents. Transfer it here. Trust agents. Add new factor. Trust in the insurance company. Now, uh, in residual covariances, no change. Options. Keep the things as it is. Make sure that the factor variances is equal to 1. Estimates. Tick mark on standardized estimates. 
model fit SRMR should be activated additional output click on the path diagram now scroll So you will see the confirmatory factor analysis model is ready. This code line represents the correlation between construct, one construct to another construct. And this line represents the factor loadings. Now let's interpret this. We are having the model fit. The fit measures are there. So there is a some concept which is known as goodness of fit and badness of fit. CFI and TLI represents the goodness of fit. SRMR and RMSCA represents the badness of fit. This is the model fit. Here we are having factor estimates. That is the correlation between one construct to another construct. And this is the factor loading. We will start doing the interpretation. Standardized estimates will appear only when you tick mark here. Now let's do the interpretation. First thing which you have to do is, the first thing which you have to interpret is model fit. The null hypothesis of chi-square test is the model perfectly fits the data. This is null hypothesis. There is no difference between the observed and the model implied covariance matrices. Here is, it is necessary that your p-value should be more than 0.05. But here it is less than 0.05. Okay. A significant p-value indicates that the null hypothesis is rejected, meaning that the model does not perfectly fit the data. However, listen carefully. However, the chi-square test is very sensitive to sample size. In large sample, even small misfits can yield significant results. Okay. Now, how will you uh, calculate the model fit? What you'll have to do, see, this is chi-square. This is degree of freedom. You take the ratio of this, and it should be less than 5. 628 divided by 129, it should be less than 5. Next is a fit measures. This we got from here. These are fit measures. Now, let's do the interpretation of this. The fit measure pro, uh, measures provided for the model indicate a mixed result, highlighting both strengths and areas for improvement. The comparative fit index is 0.944, which is above the acceptable threshold of 0.90 and close to the ideal value of 0.95, which is good, suggesting that the model has a relatively good fit. Similarly, the Tucker-Lewy index is 0.933, which also indicates a decent fit although it is slightly below the ideal threshold of 0.95. The standardized root mean square residual SRMR is 0.0518, which is within the acceptable range, that is, it is below 0.08, and, and it suggests that the model's residual, that is, the difference between the observed and the predicted correlations are relatively small, further supporting the idea of the reasonable fit. Now let's interpret the RMSE. RMSE is a root mean square error of approximation. Its value is 0 0.107, which is about the acceptable threshold of 0 0.08 and it indicates a poor fit. The 90% confidence interval for RMSE ranging from 0 0.0984 to 0 0.115 confirms that the model consistently exceeds the ideal fit range, signaling areas of misfit in the model. This suggests that the while model performs reasonably well in some areas, it may require adjustments to improve its overall fit. Now, how uh, in the next videos, I will explain how we can improve the model also. Now, let's do the interpretation of the factor loadings. This is from here. Construct and their indicators. It's just like a football team and their players. And now we want to evaluate how... Uh, how is the performance? Standardized estimates are interpreted as outer loadings or beta coefficients. In a measurement model, they indicate the strength of relationship between each indicator and its corresponding latent factor. 
see this value should be about 0 0.708 why because if you take the square of 0 0.708 it will be 50 percent that is the variance extracted by one item should be minimum 50 percent so if you take the square of this 0 0.955 it will be definitely above the 50 percent and therefore this item is considered to be the good item representing the value for the insurance outer loadings are used to assess indicator reliability and the contribution of each indicator to the factor in the next video we will see how to check the reliability and validity of the model standardized estimates are used for establishing reliability that is cronback alpha and composite reliability and conversion validity that is an average variance extracted so this estimate should be above 0 0.7 0 0.708 and this should be significant this p value should be less than 0 0.05 okay next these are factor covariances basically these are correlation between one construct to another construct so the factor covariances represents the relationship or associations between the latent factors in a model, the code part. These covariances indicate the extent to which two factors vary together, showing the degree of interrelatedness between them. In simple term, they measure how strongly connected two constructs are. High covariances suggest that the factors have commonalities or are closely related. Low covariances suggest a weak relationship between the factors. Low covariances are desirable. Factor estimates are used for establishing divergent validity. So this was all about how we can run confirmatory factor analysis in Jamovi. You can also refer my playlist in which I uploaded many videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also join me on different social medias. Link given in the description box.